God, what a day weather-wise. We've had a lot of hard rain today. Power's gone off three times, slamming my computer off, which isn't good for the computer, and quite frustrating to me being a day trader trading using my computer. Then, while I was making this video, I get a warning, a tornado warning, which is a lot different than a tornado watch. Tornado watch just means conditions are right, a tornado might pop up. Tornado warning means we've seen one, so they told us to take cover. Well, I don't know where it went or what it did, but it's clear now and it's gotten quiet. So I do believe we're safe again. So on with the show. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday, May 7th. Now, you all know what we do here. We focus in on hot penny stocks. I'm a day trader trading penny stocks every single day. And while I'm out there, I am looking for stocks under five bucks that have heat that have potential to make us some money. Now, normally when I find these hot penny stocks, I'm looking at the charts. It just makes sense because as a day trader, I am looking at the charts most of the time. So while I'm there, I'm doing research. I bring up a penny stock scan and I start going through every single chart from the top of the list on down. And at a glance, I can tell if there's heat in a chart. It's pretty easy. You can see if there's a hook setting up for a breakout. You can see big bounces. You can see a run going to the moon. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, now take the time to go through the press releases and the filings for this company. See if you can find some hot information. If you can find hot news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And today we are looking at ZKIN, which I did find by looking at the charts. This is ZK International Group. Now, this is a Chinese company. They do most of their work in China. This is a good thing and a bad thing. Chinese companies, they seem to always have tension with America, and that could be a problem in the future. And of course, China's got her own problems going on. So you never really know what's going to go on with the Chinese stock. The good news is, because this company does most of their business in China, they're doing a lot of business, and I can see it getting a lot bigger. But they don't just work in China, they also work in the Middle East, Asia, Europe, so they are in other countries as well. Now, I notice Zken pre-market. Every day as a habit, I post all the news I can find on hot penny stocks. I post as many runners for hot penny stocks as I can find. I'm not saying I get it all, but I do post a lot of it. I'm a madman for two hours. And that's when I seen this. She had taken this big bounce pre-market. She fell down to the bell, then took off again, and now she settled back down and looks pretty cool. Well, initially, when I seen that big bounce pre-market, I wanted to know what caused it. So I came over here looking at the filings and the press releases. Well, she had news come out today. It's good news, but it isn't like it's the first time we've heard about it. This came out in February as well. So I really didn't think that's what caused it to run. There was two other pieces of news in between those two, but they were actually bad news. However, they had polished them up and made them a little bit better, but still, I don't think that was enough to make it bounce the way it bounced today. Then I was looking at the description just to see what it is they do. At the bottom of the description, I saw something that made my eyes go big. That's the catalyst in the description. And that's why I'm sharing this with you because of that. So Zekin, she finished the day at about 73 cents and she was up almost 14%. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits compared to those OTC penny stocks. First off, all transactions are free. Second, you get to trade pre-market, after-market. And third, most importantly, it's safer on the major exchange. There's more oversight, more rules, which is why so many of these companies get kicked down to the OTC because they keep breaking the rules. So what is Zekin all about? Well, we do have a pretty decent description right here, but it was this description that made my eyes go boing. So I'm going to read this one to you. This came out in the news that came out today. So it is the most current description. ZK International Group is a China-based engineering company building and investing in innovative technologies for the modern world. ZK owns 28 patents, 21 trademarks, two technical achievement awards, and 10 national and industry standard awards. 
Zekin's core business is to engineer and manufacture patented high-performance stainless steel and carbon steel pipe products that effectively deliver high-quality, highly sustainable, and environmentally sound drinkable water to the Chinese, Asia, and European markets. That's going to always be in demand. It has supplied stainless steel pipelines for over 2,000 projects. Check this out now. They're no little company, which include the Beijing National Airport, the Water Cube, and the Bird's Nest, which were venues for the 2008 Beijing Olympics. ZK International is preparing, here we go, ready, to capitalize on the $850 billion commitment made by the Chinese government to improve the quality of water, which has been stated to be 70% unfit for human contact. 70%. You know how many people are in China? That's a lot of people that could be hurt. So this is seriously a crisis for the country. And the way I see it, if this company is working with the Beijing Olympics, they're working with the Beijing National Airport, I know they've got all their credentials. They've been around for 23 years. They are definitely going to be in the running for part of this money. Now, how much of it they, they're going to get? I don't know. And of course, I am making presumptions. There is no news saying they've gotten anything. But when you have 70% of the country in hazard's way because of your water, you're going to take care of it in a big time fashion. It's going to be on the agenda to get done fast. And I think this company is going to be one of the people in the queue to get a lot of that business. Just my opinion. Now, the company has a lot of divisions that all work in synergy with their pipes and their water infrastructure. But I discovered that they've got two other divisions that have nothing to do with the infrastructure and water. That is X Sigma Entertainment and X Sigma. X Sigma Entertainment. The formation of X Sigma Entertainment was created to acquire assets that will increase shareholder value by targeting businesses that are in growth industries. Currently, the company has engaged in several discussions and negotiations regarding potential investments in an online gaming company. The company is evaluating several assets with the focus on management, approved licenses, intellectual property, and branding. In addition, the company is keen to enter the online gaming industry and thus its focus on an investment will be weighted onto companies that have access to profitability and growth. Now, Sigma X or X Sigma explores new opportunities in smart contracts, supply chain management, and other blockchain based solutions. X Sigma subsequently pivoted to creating projects in decentralized finance and creating software for crypto exchanges. X Sigma will continue to be the research and development arm of the company and will continue to seek out opportunities that will allow the company to add shareholder value by adding technology and innovation to its existing core business. Its core business being the piping for the infrastructure for drinking water, which I just can't understate, folks. This is a big deal, especially when 70% of the water that you're delivering can't even be consumed. Then they're moving into online gaming, which is gambling, and they're moving into the blockchain. These are hot industries, and I don't know where they're going to go with them. They haven't given us a lot of information. But between their main core business and these other divisions, I see a lot of potential here. But really, it was that bounce in the morning because I can't pinpoint why she jumped. I get the feeling all this potential, somebody knows something. Something is about ready to happen, and that's why we're looking at gut feeling. So let's take a look at the stock now. See what she did in relative volume today. What? Oh my God, boom! I mean, seriously, folks. She was doing about 20,000, 21,000 shares a day for the last 30 days. Today, she went over 4.5 million shares. We are talking over 200 times her normal volume. In other words, more than 20,000% increase in her volume. That's a lot of extra volume, folks. <laughs> share structure for Zken. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Outstanding share count is about 30, 31 million, which is great. 
I don't know what the float is, but if it was 30 million, I'd be happy with that. That is an excellent float, but it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company, just over 19 million. Financials for Zekin. Are they making any money? Yes, they are, and it's been growing every single year for the last four years, starting off at about 64 million. We know it's millions, not thousands. We've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Jumped to 86 million in 2020, 99 million in 2021, and 102 million in 2022. What's kind of weird is they were making strong profits back here, more than they've ever made, and they made the least amount of revenues. They jumped 20 million here, and look how they dropped. Ended up with about one fifth of what they were doing back here. But ever since 2020, the, the profits have been growing as, along with the revenues. Checking out our quarterlies. Ooh, we got nothing here, but that happens a lot on the major exchanges. So let's check out that balance sheet. They do have money in the bank. We got about $7.6 million. Total assets, $128 million. Total liabilities is down there, $43 million. So we have positive stockholder equity of about $84 million. We ain't hold no bag here. Disclosures for Zken. We do have one filing here that came out on the 2nd of May. The one before that is on the 22nd. And I'll bet you both of these, because <laughs> both of these correlate to the same dates that the news came out. Let's jump into the news to look at these. All right, so we've got one here on the 20th. And that filing came out on the 22nd. And then we've got one that came out today. Both of these pieces of news are basically the same. ZK International Group and the CF Opportunity Fund complete the second tranche of the $5 million financing priced at $1.58 a share. And then news came out today that they finally closed the deal. They were getting portions of the money at a time, tranches, and they got their last tranche. Now, what you need to recognize here is the price. This investor just bought $5 million worth of shares. It was like $3.1 million, and they paid about $1.58, $1.59 a share. Well, look at that. That's like double where we're at now. And at the time they made the deal, it was closer to $0.50. Cents. So they paid a premium of like 170% or yeah, 170% on the normal price. So if an investor coming in is willing to pay more than double for the stock, don't you think it's worth more than 73 cents too? Now those other pieces of news, I said they were bad news. They are. They are two pieces of news from the NASDAQ, both of them informing the company that they're out of compliance. But things have been polished up and changed. First off, this is a Chinese company a foreign company. So when they file their financials, they file a 20F. We didn't see a 2023 financial there. We saw 2022. That was the last one they had because they're late on it. They were in hot water because of this problem. Well, they appealed, they sent some information into NASDAQ and NASDAQ has given them an exception. They've given them a grace period. They have until June 7th of this year to get that 20F form in. Now, it may have been delayed because of the Chinese government. We've seen this before. 20Fs have a lot of information in them, and the Chinese government may not want some of that information disclosed. This company is working with infrastructure of China. Maybe they don't want some of that information disclosed. So they're trying to figure out a way to get these filings in and still satisfy NASDAQ's condition. Because NASDAQ will say you're missing information here. And the company can't give it because their country won't let them. I'm just presuming here. So they've got until June 7th to get this taken care of. The other non-compliance is for the minimum bid price requirement. Stocks on the major exchange cannot go under a dollar and stay under a dollar for too long. If they do, they will be kicked off and thrown down to the OTC market. So what happens is they get a warning. They get six months to get that price up over a dollar. So there's really nothing the company can do. It's up to us, the investors. We got to bid that price over a dollar 
close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. We do that, the company's out of hot water and everything's good. If we fail to do that, the company's got one of two choices, allow themselves to be thrown down to the OTC market or do a reverse flip. So come on folks, let's bid this stock up. So that's really what you got here. You've got two non-compliances that have been extended. They've got time, not a lot of time, but they've got time. We have $5 million that just came in from an investor that paid one and a half times the true value on the price, on the price. It was about 50 cents. They paid $1.59. We're at 73 cents right now. I think there's room to grow. We can count on the due diligence that the investor did on this company. But outside of that, I don't have any catalyst I can put my finger on except for that Chinese money, $850 billion that they're going to be giving out to companies to take care of their crisis in the drinking water problem. I think this company is going to be there. I think they're going to get some of that money. How could they not if they were working on the Beijing National Airport and the Beijing Olympics? Of course, they're going to get some of this. We just don't have all the answers yet. However, again, I say that big bounce that we had pre-market happened for a reason. Just because we don't see the reason doesn't mean we shouldn't pay attention. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's do some charting over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim, while we wait for the internet to reconnect. It hasn't been on the entire time I've been making this video. So fingers crossed it's back up by the time I finish. So we're looking at ticker ZKIN. This is ZK International Group, and I got it opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. So it was six months ago in August, we had our low of just over 45 cents. Then we had a big rip over that 200 and a surge to $1.35 in December. Then she started to fall back to the 200, bounced on it, and then crushed that 200 and fell deep underneath it. Came back up and hit it a few times and you would have thought she would have gotten on top of it because the 200 day SMA is climbing. All it really takes is a flat 200 day for the price to be eager to get on top. Well, it never did it here. The reason? I'm believing it's all these other SMAs. They're all coming down, beating her in the head. You normally don't see the price inclined to climb until the SMAs are turned around and climbing as well. And they are all falling through this period. So the price is falling with it. It wasn't until right about this area she started to level off. Price was falling, came up, and she leveled off. So here we've got many days of her going sideways. And then right here as she's closing in on the 200, all of our SMAs are starting to climb. She explodes. Yes, the news came out. She jumped from 63 cents up to about 92 cents. You're looking at a 50% run there. She came back down no lower than where it started from. To me, this is a sincere token sign that she's prepared to climb as soon as she gets an opportunity. Well, the next bar was the opportunity. She shot up again to about 88 cents, fell back to 72, 73 cents, right on top of that nine day SMA. A perfect landing. All of our other SMAs are about ready to cross that 200 day SMA. Those are gonna be golden crosses. They normally put more oomph in the price climb. Lots of volume came in today, like the only volume she's virtually ever had. And all of our oscillators are looking real good, except for the RSI. It was zooming up, fell down hard, and right now she's a little cool. She is right at 55. But actually, this four-hour chart does not look bad. Take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. <whistles> look at how flat that is. She is hugging that 200-day SMA. Actually, she's hugging all the SMAs. They're all wrapped up in there together. Then she jumped up, made a move, got up on top of the 50-day SMA, separated herself from the 200. Then she put down a launch pad. That's what I think of these. One bar coming down, pushing onto or through a strong SMA. It's just a push off. It's a launch. And it pushed back up. And today, she took off. She went up pre-market, came down at the bell, bounced again after the bell, came back down. And right now, it looks like she's going sideways, but we'll get a better view of that when we go down to the five-minute chart. 
Oscillators are cooling off, as you would expect. The price came down a lot back half of the day. And our RSI is cooled down too. It's down there at 51. Take a look at that five day, five minute. Wow, talk about flat. Look at this. Oh my God, it doesn't get any flatter than that. Then we started getting a little bit of activity here. Then we had some volatility. We hit a low bubble, bounced back up onto the 200, which just came into the picture. Take notice of that. I have noticed it in many cases. When a new SMA comes onto the board, the price, wherever it's at, goes to the new SMA. Eight out of 10 times. It doesn't mean it's going to stay there, but it does go to it and touch it. Well, this appeared immediately. She started pushing down towards it, tapped it here, tapped it there, broke it here, and then jumped up. And this is where we had our launch. She is bouncing off of that 200-day SMA, came down. She is scraping her head underneath it here, working hard to get back up on top and right at the bell in aftermarket hours. She succeeded getting on top of that 200 climbing on top of her nine day SMA. We still have our other SMAs which have to turn around and help her to climb. Right now, these can be a in, in interference, if you will. She's got to fight each one of these, but if she can push through these with some power and get on top, she'll yank them right around and they'll start pushing her up. Oscillators, that's what it says is going on right now, look fall down and a turn up real hard and fast, about ready to cut through the pink line and get back on top. Our MACD has already had her crossover right here and she's about ready to cross the signal line and our RSI, doggone, we can't get that RSI up. It is down there at 51. So what we see here is a stock that just came alive. It just woke up, folks. It was really flat for a while here. We had a big bounce that we can't put our finger on what caused it. Maybe it was that $5 million closing. You know, they got the last tranche. Did she bounce? Let's go back and see if she bounced on February 2nd. February 2nd, there's November. There is January, February 22nd, right there. There's the news. So on that day, she jumped from 76 cents up to 91 cents. So you had uh, about 25% run right there. That's a 50% run. So maybe it was on that news. I'm still not convinced. I like Zekin, but she's going to need some more due diligence, folks. We're looking for that financial to come out. When it comes out, I will advise you to jump into it and read it because that's where all the important information is going to be. But I'm going to give you a fair warning. 20 Fs are not like 10 Ks. There is a ton of information in there because of international laws, and it can really be a drag. So if you know what you're looking for, just use the search bar, you know, put in split, consolidation, use the date 2024 if you want to find stuff that's just happened here recently. That'll make it a heck of a lot easier for you. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.